Why do we love Pixel smartphones? Camera? Yeah. Touchscreen? Yeah. But first of all, this is a smartphone straight from Google. So the most important thing in it is the software. Moreover, a Google phone is not only a pure Android and an exclusive Pixel launcher, it is also a lot of features like light caption, settings, special wallpapers, and of course, smooth scrolling. All in all, this absolutely unique firmware is only available on Pixel. Yes, although, is it really? No, actually, many Android smartphones can be turned into Pixels. For example, this Redmi Note 9 Pro. And for this, all we need is the firmware Pixel Experience. What is it? What can it do? How do you turn your device into a real Google phone? We'll figure all of that out today. This is Droider. I'm Boris Vidinsky. Let's go. Today, we will return to one of the main advantages of Android smartphones and why many people once fell in love with them which is the ability to flash them. The new firmware completely changes the software on which your device runs. How is this better than a regular launcher replacement? For example, the firmware for me is not only about the desktop, but also the many settings, gestures, features, and most importantly, the insides of the operating system. In our case, this is important because a pure Android without any upgrades from the smartphone manufacturer flies fast. So, the Pixel Experience, what is it? This is fairly well-known developer community that adapts the Google firmware to a variety of smartphones. The main thing is that they have an official website with a list of devices that are currently supported. There are instructions and links to the firmware download. By the way, their code is open, which guarantees safety. Which devices are supported? The most popular are, of course, Xiaomi and Redmi. But by the way, there is also, for example, OnePlus. It would be interesting to see. The best Pixel experience is adapted with a processor from Qualcomm, but it is also possible for MediaTek versions. I started my Pixel experience with the Redmi Note 9 Pro. How do you do it? The installation process is not particularly complicated if you have already done something like this before. You need to unlock the bootloader, put the phone in recovery, and then flash it. And if these are familiar words for you, then write in the comments and we'll break it down for you on a simpler level. It might even be interesting. Also, click the like button and the bell and subscribe so you see more of these videos. An inexperienced user can plan to spend two to five hours on the firmware reading the instructions. But this is not such a high price for the Pixel experience that you get. But most importantly, remember that this process is done at your own risk. And in any case, it's possible to break your phone. Well, okay, so we've just flashed the device. Now let's see what it can do. From the very first settings of the phone, you have the feeling that you've just unpacked a new Pixel. Everything looks exactly the same. In my experience, everything works very quickly and without bugs, as if this firmware was specially made for the smartphone. Actually, no, it's all basic stuff like NFC, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and calls. Everything's also running smoothly. By the way, one of the surprises for me was that the firmware supports over-the-air updates. And by the way, some devices have the opportunity to just download Pixel Experience, but also the so-called Pixel Experience Plus, which is essentially the same thing. It's just that they've added additional functions. How do you say, from the creators? So on the main screen, we see a clean, smooth, beautiful Android, cool animation gestures, quick settings panel, and basic settings menu. Just like the real Pixel, their branded apps, a voice recorder with speech recognition, and a watch with a new cool sleep mode. The widget is in the center of attention at the top, and the search bar is at the bottom. A wildly convenient thing. The assistant is activated by swiping from the corner. There is a page with Google News, and also an important function, locking the phone with your fingerprint. For example, in this smartphone, the sensor is located inside the power button on the right side, and everything is fine. You can enable face control, face unlock, of course, only through the camera, but it also works great. On some smartphones, even with IPS displays, always on display is activated. Wow, really? Talk about battery drain. But okay, there are all more or less familiar features. But what's exclusive from Google here? Well, firstly, the settings are adaptive brightness and adaptive battery management, which function through the use of Google neural networks. Secondly, there is a function of live captions, which creates subtitles for video and audio content in real time. If the sound is turned off, it works really great, but only in English. Now, another very useful thing from Google is anti-spam during calls, which is built into the system and it works really cool. Now, I'm using the OnePlus with no anti-spam, and it's somewhat painful. And of course, most of the past Pixel experience has a camera that is adapted to this device, and will most likely support a variety of lenses on it. Well, okay, you say the features are good, but how does a foreign firmware affect the performance of a smartphone? And the benchmarks that I did for other users didn't show anything like that either. And of course, one of the nice things about Pixel smartphones is the personalization. First, the sound and melody from this year look really cool. They're animated, and you can choose one according to your mood. 
Secondly, a cool selection of wallpapers, especially animated ones. However, in my case, for some reason, instead of animated wallpapers, there are screenshots. Apparently, this is just the beta version. However, other devices don't usually have such problems. The main feeling from the firmware is, of course, the speed and smoothness of its operation. Well, and cleanliness. After the overloaded Mi UI, it all looks very cool and fresh. Although the latest Mi UI 12 is also a cool thing. Write in the comments if you enjoy watching our videos about firmware, since it's a new topic, and what exactly you'd like to see. If you're an expert, by any chance. But the main thing is that this isn't just a great way to upgrade a new smartphone, but also to give life to an old one. For example, the Mi 5S has been running on the 10th Android and regularly getting updates since 2015 until now. And I recommend the Pixel experience to anyone who is sick and tired of stock firmware. Thanks for watching. Click the like, click the bell, click subscribe. I'm Boris Vidinsky for Droider. See you in the future. And instead of the announcement, Please tell us in the comments which Android smartphone do you have and why did you choose it?